Xiaomi loves to rain on OnePlus's parade always. Basically, while OnePlus was busy running that cringe digital launch event for the OnePlus 10 Pro, Xiaomi went ahead and tweeted that they're actually launching the 12 Pro in India. I mean, I mean, come, come, come on, Xiaomi. Also, come on, OnePlus. <laughs> If you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. You're watching Retech, our weekly tech news show where I talk about the most important tech news of the week and, of course, some silly ones along the way. And by the way, I realize that a lot of people are watching our videos and not hitting the red subscribe button. Should I come to your screens and do it? I'll, I'll actually do it. I'll come to your screen. I'll do it. Please do it. Get it done. So coming back to the Xiaomi 12 Pro, it has a few extras over the OnePlus 10 Pro and it could be a really, really interesting phone to launch in India and could actually spice up that entire 70,000 rupees, you know, flagship phone market where we now have the OnePlus 10 Pro, the iPhone 9 Pro and then in the future, the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Essentially, the Xiaomi 12 Pro has a faster 120 watt fast charging as is the case with a lot of Xiaomi phones this year and triple 50 megapixel camera setup as well. Also, the display is this fancy 2K panel with QHD plus resolution, 1,500 nits of peak brightness and more importantly, support for Dolby Vision. Ideally, if you've seen Xiaomi's pricing in India, they launched the Mi 11 Ultra last year at around the same price as the OnePlus 9 Pro and that was a way better phone compared to the OnePlus 9 Pro. So if Xiaomi launches the 12 Pro for lower than the price of the OnePlus 10 Pro and the iQ 9 Pro, oh, things could get really hard. And for news number two, ever since Black Shark left our country, I had completely forgotten about the brand. Interestingly though, the company is still launching a lot of killer gaming phones even today. Only if Android had more exclusive games though. <laughs> Now, the company launched three phones, the Black Shark 5, the Black Shark 5 RS, which is a very weird name, and the Black Shark 5 Pro. And what's the difference between these phones? Well, you get the Black Shark 5 with Snapdragon 870, the 5 RS comes with Snapdragon 888 Plus, and the 5 Pro, of course, comes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And talking about the design, I do like the design of that camera module on the Black Shark 5 series, and it kind of looks very interesting. It looks like a Stormtrooper, especially in that white variant. Although I don't really know how many folks will actually use a camera on a gaming phone. In fact, I don't even know how many phones actually are craving for a gaming phone these days. If you guys are, let me know in the comment section below. Talking about gaming, have you guys sideloaded Apex Legends yet? Please try it out, it's bloody awesome. To sum it up, the Black Shark 5 series actually starts at about 33,000 rupees and goes up to 65,000 rupees. And this is the price in China, of course, and this is the converted price that I'm talking about. But this seems like a very good price for what they're offering, especially with that high refresh rate panel and of course, great uh, you know response times as well. Now let's break that phone news cycle and talk about gaming. Sony has finally announced three new tiers to its PlayStation Plus service. That reminds me, I need to really dust off my PS4 and maybe play a few games when I get the time, considering the fact that I've literally stopped even trying to pick up the PS5. Now coming back to the PS Plus tiers, you have the PS Plus Essential, you have the PS Plus... Now coming back to the PS Plus tiers, you have the PS Plus Essential, you have the PS Plus Extra, and you have the PS Plus premium. Now the base essential tier is the same as the PS Plus offering that currently exists at the moment. And if you choose to pick up the PS Plus extra tier, you get 400 extra games, which includes a lot of, you know, Sony's originals as well. And when you look at the PS Plus premium tier, you get subscription to 340 more games, which includes PS Now as well. And of course, the PS2 and, uh, you know, PlayStation original catalog games as well. But there's one thing that I'm really disappointed about is that these tiers are not really a competitor to Xbox's Game Pass, primarily because one of the things that Sony has confirmed is that you won't get day one exclusives on any one of these tiers. Also, there was some leak about the pricing of these tiers in India. We'll show that right now on screen, but take that with a pinch of salt because someone might have actually pulled the trigger a little too early and the price is subject to change. In any case, most of us are going to be like, oh, it's still too expensive. Everything is expensive in India. In this week's WTF news, did you know that Tim Cook had a stalker? Ba, ba, ba. Apparently the stalker, her name was Lady Choi Lee. She used to send emails to Tim Cook since 2020. Apple actually submitted a restraining order at that time when she sent an email to Tim Cook, which read, Tim, if you're destined for our lives, any circumstance, we can meet each other. Apparently, she even landed up to Tim Cook's house uninvited on a couple of occasions. And now there's a new restraining order on her, which lasts for three years, and she can't be anywhere around Tim Cook for about 200 yards. 
Now coming back to phone news, Pixel 6a's retail box has leaked and the picture on the box is probably fake. I mean, the phone's image on the box does look a lot like the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro with that Weiser camera cutout and of course, dual camera setup as well. But Win Future has, you know, noticed some inconsistencies in design and thinks that this could actually be fake. So if you are waiting for that Pixel 6a, this leak is the one that you should not pay attention to. Because you know what, at Retech, we want to ensure that you get the right information. Although the next leak seems kind of legit, primarily because it looks very real. The Vivo Pad and the Vivo Watch are expected to come to India really soon. The Vivo Pad is of course a tablet with 11 inch display and a 2.5K resolution. It's gonna be an LCD panel, but more importantly, it'll support Dolby Vision, which is pretty awesome. And it's gonna be an interesting tablet primarily because it'll come with the Snapdragon 870 chip and which is one of my favorite chips last year. I hope that Vivo can price it right so that it could be attractive to a lot of folks. The other thing is that the Vivo Watch is apparently going to be a rebadged version of the Vivo Watch 2, which launched in China with a 1.43 inch circular display. I really like what Vivo is doing with the design of its products, but MKBHD thinks that the pad looks a lot like the iPad. And if you're wondering, Vivo is actually planning to line up the launches of these products around the end of IPL, which is around May 29. All right, for the next news, I'm gonna keep it short. The OnePlus 10 Pro and the OnePlus Bullets Wireless Z2 were launched officially, and we have extensive coverage on both these products in our detailed reviews, a link should pop up right now. But what you need to know is that the OnePlus 10 Pro is 2000 rupees more than the launch price of the OnePlus 9 Pro, but it removes IP rating, although it does add uh, a lot of design improvements. And the more important part is that the software also seems slightly better this time around. Having said that the Bullets Wireless Z2 just has a few minor upgrades, one of which is the fact that it has better battery life, which is something that a lot of people care about, but there's no ANC, which is something that I was expecting. What do you guys think of the price of the OnePlus products? Do you guys like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comment section below. Forget about the OnePlus 10 Pro because the leak around the new Motorola phone is extremely exciting, but the name of that new Motorola phone is extremely terrible. It's called the Moto S30 Pro Ultra. Yeah, I, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. Although having said that, it could very well be a Pro Ultra phone considering the specs. It is expected to come with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus and a 200 megapixel primary camera and 125 watt of fast charging. All that's great, but I really hope that Motorola also prizes it right. This is a phone that is definitely something to be excited about, especially for Android phone flagship enthusiasts. <sighs> Let me take a breather. That's it for this week's episode of Retag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time. This is Esha signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.